Adam-22 was once one of the most respected and influential voices in the underground hip-hop community, providing a platform for up-and-coming artists to make a name for themselves. However, with the discovery of his dark past and his relentless pursuit of clout and wealth proving to be his ultimate downfall, he is now one of the internet's biggest jokes. Adam has been making a living on the internet for the past two decades. In 2006, after reaping the benefits of credit card fraud and online poker, in like 2003, I was running around doing mad credit card fraud around where I grew up. He began building his very own media empire. Following his love for BMX, by 2015, Adam had created an incredibly successful BMX website known as The Come Up, regularly posting articles about the BMX scene, as well as an equally successful subsequent clothing line called On Some Shit, which at one point had its own physical store in LA. He had built up a good reputation for himself, and anyone interested in the BMX world would know who Adam was. By June, Adam made a decision that would ultimately change his life forever. Switching away from his usual BMX content, he would rebrand his YouTube channel and upload his first ever podcast with Ryan Dennehy. This uh, is the first episode of what I, I guess I'm just going to describe it as my non-BMX podcast because I don't really have a consistent theme thought up or anything. While the guests at first came from a variety of backgrounds, the podcast quickly began to tailor to its hip-hop audience. With a lot of underground artists coming onto the show for an interview, as well as interviews, Adam would also upload videos from concerts he had attended and even music videos for some artists. No Jumper quickly became a notorious channel in the hip-hop scene. As word began to spread, the level of guests that would appear on the show started to rapidly rise, moving away from SoundCloud rappers to more established talents in the genre. Famously in April 2016, Adam would give Florida rapper XXTentacion his first official interview as an artist and has since been credited with exposing X's music to a wider audience. So, Most uh, people probably don't say this, but Adam, if anybody that comes on this f***ing show, Adam is a very cool guy. Adam will not make you feel uncomfortable. This was absolutely my first interview and he made me feel very comfortable. The interview is still Adam's most successful podcast to date, with over 22 million views across the last seven years. The channel would continue to grow and grow over the next couple of years as Adam started to build strong connections in the industry. Rolling Stones labeled him Underground Hip Hop's Major Tastemaker, highlighting his ability at discovering rap's rising talents. This status was solidified after he signed a record deal with Atlantic Records and also went on tour with Lil Pump. However, in March 2018, Adam's shady past started to unveil itself, as two girls would speak out about their experiences with him. The two women discussed the alleged sexual assaults with Pitchfork. The first woman spoke out under the pseudonym, Jane. She explained how they both first met on an online message board back in 2005, and that the two would eventually go on to meet up together in Manhattan. After taking the subway back to his apartment, he would then make advances she was uncomfortable with, saying, at first I was okay with it, but quickly became uncomfortable as it went further than I wanted to go. I told him I wasn't into it, but he didn't stop and became pretty angry. Eventually, after the event took place, Jane would confide in someone she thought she could trust about the whole situation. Unfortunately, news would break to Adam, and he would take to the internet to post a blog titled The Time a Girl Accused Me of Rape in a 1800-word post where he doxed Jane's first name and included several photos of her, he gave his side of the story. She was letting me touch her all over and was making out with me the whole time, but she didn't seem like she was really enjoying it all that much. How much a woman enjoys sexual activity is usually not highly correlated to how much fun I'm having though, so I didn't give it much thought. The second woman who came forward would like to be known as D. She told Pitchfork that she too had met Adam on the same message board as Jane in 2006. But Dee was only 16 years old at the time, whilst Adam was in his early 20s. However, despite this ending their contact, three years later, she would eventually meet up with Adam after he flew over to Vancouver, where she claimed Adam would again make non-consensual advances. I was like, no, just stop. I was pushing him off me and my hands were pushing him. He easily had 100 pounds on me. When someone is that big and they have the ability to grab both your wrists with their one hand and pull your arms over your head, you can't do anything. She told Pitchfork, after confronting Adam about the situation, he told her to keep what had happened a secret between the two of them, and that he mentioned he was still getting lots of heat over Jane. In January 2010, Adam would write several blog posts about the situation with Dee, claiming that she was still pretending to not want to bang me, as well as once again doxing another victim's full name. 
He shared explicit photos of Dee, with some believed to have been taken when she was only 14 years old, and concluded one of his posts with, If statutory rape is wrong, I didn't want to be right. She was stupid hot and I wanted in. In light of these allegations, Adam would respond with a tweet saying, I didn't know women from my past would fabricate stories, but I'm ready to face those head on too. Before speaking about the situation on Vlad TV. There's like a girl that I dated for like three, four months back, like about 10 years ago. And she just like came out of the woodwork and I like just decided to say that I her like, there's nothing that's gonna happen that could prove what actually happened in some bedroom like 12 years ago, 11 years ago. Yeah. These allegations surprisingly didn't slow down Adam's career too much although his record deal with Atlantic Records was terminated. And then you lost your record deal. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a one-year deal, and we did the one year, and then we decided not to go forward from there. Okay. Was it because of all the allegations that started to resurface? By 2018, the No Jumper brand had gained over one million subscribers, and the majority of his audience believed that Adam was innocent. It would eventually get swept under the carpet as Adam continued expanding the No Jumper brand. With the SoundCloud rap era slowly coming to an end, no Jumper started to move away from its roots. Controversial YouTubers would appear regularly on the show instead of underground rap artists, and the channel quickly became a hub for YouTube drama, infamously hosting a podcast episode with the degenerate Avengers of YouTube. Because I'm a real man and I don't need yes men on the internet to tell me who the f I am, you little this is WWE guy. Put Thank you, bro. Out. I'm staring at you in the face Listen. and telling you that you're missing what I'm saying. But if you want to talk what's outside that face mean? to face, what's the standing up mean? What's it that mean? mean? What's the getting closer mean? What's the grabbing mic? Like mean? Mean? and subscribe. I don't want to do. With the channel now taking a new direction, Adam's co-hosts would begin to get their own shows and in turn create more drama and conflict to boost No Jumper's growth. Adam's need for relevancy and views became apparent when he began exploiting and disrespecting the people who were closest to him. In January 2023, Adam would out fellow co-host Housephone's relationship with Gracie Jane. Despite Housephone being a close friend and long-term employee of Adam, he would discuss his personal life on his podcast, doing an awful job at censoring his name. I have a feeling that this will soon be about him. Oh, I'm going to be hearing a lot about this. Housephone would confront Adam about the situation, where once again Adam would resort to bringing up personal details which ultimately led to house phone parting ways with no jumper. My best friend that died? Oh, just, he's been going through the mom sh But you, you, are you actually acting like I have some kind of disrespect for your mom when You're I- You're respectful as f paid for the f First of all, as soon as it all. happened, just because- no. Adam's blatant disregard for the people around him didn't stop there. Following a disagreement with AD about interviewing Richard Spencer, a known white supremacist, he would be replaced by Lush on the podcast the following week. Adam used the opportunity to fire Lush on the following episode. You What's lied up? to me. What? You lied to me, Lush. About what? What I just tried to talk to you about in the hall? Nah. Yeah. I honestly think, at least for now, maybe we could come to the bottom of this at some point, but it's probably better that you just leave. All right, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not expect this uh, to be a narrative that was taking place today, but we just, we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just super disappointed. And soon after, AD announced he would be leaving No Jumper. Um, it's a new day and age. Yeah, man, we left the fort, man. No more AD at No Jumper. Adam started to receive a lot of criticism, and later in the year, it wouldn't be long until his past was brought up again. After inviting perv busters onto the show, Adam was confronted about previous allegations. So what's up with these allegations of, of, of Adam f***ing with a 16-year-old? Nah, come on, bro. We can't do that, man. What come you mean on, we can't man. do that? Come on, but bro. wait, wait, no, no, no. I'll be a hit. Wait, nah, I'll be, on, I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address it. I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address the situation that happened with you. There is no situation with me. The one where you was messing with the 16-year-old girl? What do you think happened? The article says I'm going she was on. 19 when I met her. She was 19 when you met her? Yeah. The you, article says it. So, but what did you say? I said that I spoke to her on the phone when she was 16 before I realized that she was... All right, she well, was that's, how we, that's yeah. how we catch a lot that's, of us. That's how we she catch him. Although he kicked them off the podcast, a familiar face spoke up about what he had seen from Adam himself. How you gonna f I was underage, so how you gonna f the same girls that I was f when I was 16? Yes way, yes way. Now, I was 16, my age, right? Adam 
What's girls that was the same age as me when I was 16? Like, what's wrong with you, bro? You are a straight with the spotlight beginning to shine brightly onto Adam, he would announce a new collab that would change his whole reputation. Over the weekend, oh no, something like that happened. She filmed her first ever scene with another man. I know you was mad. Shit. Hey guys, guess who I'm shooting with today? <laughs> it's finally happening. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna do that. <laughs> the announcement went viral. Thousands of people started to mock Adam. He had become the biggest joke of 2023, but that's exactly what he wanted. The allegations had been drowned out by the waves of trolling, and with Adam constantly promoting and playing up to his new c title, that's all people would talk about. I don't know. I'm not like, I was not horrified by it. I'm not like upset by it. I'm not going to say that this is going to be something that I'm going to be pounding my to, but. I hope you watch the scene and I hope you. Yeah, you see, you said this attention also brought Adam and Lena money, making a healthy profit from the situation. That we had a number in mind that I remember she said to me, I think it might make X amount of dollars, and I could say confidently that we're probably at like 50 times that. To this day, they still embrace their new reputation, milking every last penny possible. I'm Adam 22. And I'm Lena the Plug. And we're the founders of Plug Talk. And today we've got 10 eligible bachelors here. And we're going to find out which one is worthy of being our next threesome. But more importantly, it keeps the skeletons locked in the closet. 